Helix Extractions, presented by the National Forensic Science Technology Center. The learning objectives. Competence in extraction of different biological stains. Knowledge of the theory of DNA isolation using Helix extraction methods. Knowledge of advantages and disadvantages of Helix and an overview of the 5% Kelex extraction procedures. Here is an overview of the DNA process that occurs after screening. DNA extraction, then DNA quantitation, DNA amplification, and finally capillary electrophoresis. Let's start with some DNA facts. A white blood cell or epithelial cell, these are called diploid cells, and they contain approximately six picograms of DNA. In blood, there is approximately 1.5 micrograms of DNA per drop. In saliva, there is 50 to 500 nanograms of DNA per drop, and a hair plucked has approximately 300 nanograms of DNA. Sperm cells, which are haploid cells, contain approximately 3 picograms of DNA. In semen, there is approximately 10 micrograms of DNA per drop. Listed below are some clean techniques that are employed and other considerations when doing extractions. Wear gloves. Use a barrier to open tubes, example a tube opener or chem wipe. Use only sterile filtered pipette tips. Use sterile deionized water. Run the SOP specified controls, example reagent blanks. And make the Kelex per laboratory SOPs. Kelex 100 is an ion exchange resin that is added as a 5% solution weight to volume. Kelex is composed of styrene divinyl benzene copolymers containing paired aminodiastate ions that act as chelating groups and bind metal ions such as magnesium. By moving the magnesium ion from the reaction, nucleases are inactivated and the DNA is protected. The following are things you may need to prepare in advance when you are doing a chelix extraction. You will need sterile 1.5 milliliter microcentrifuge tubes, sterile deionized water, sterile TE buffer, sterile spin baskets or separator cups, set the incubator to 56 degrees Celsius, and set the water bath to 100 degrees Celsius. Preparing a 5% Kelex suspension. Add 0.5 grams of Kelex 100, a 100 to 200 mesh sodium form, to a sterile beaker or suitable glass container. Add 10 milliliters of sterile DI water. Mix in a container on a hot plate with a stir bar inside. Check the pH. The value should be approximately 9 to 11. Adjust the pH with a solution of sodium hydroxide as needed. Since the Kelex beads settle quickly, stirring on a stir plate should be done while pipetting. A wide bore pipette tip should be used. The Kelex extraction process. Many protocols include an initial wash step. Generally, this is done by adding approximately one milliliter of sterile DI water to the sample. This aids in the removal of heme and other proteins that inhibit PCR. This can be done at room temperature or 37 degrees Celsius. The incubation times may vary. After the incubation, the sample is centrifuged and the supernatant is removed and discarded. Note, leave approximately 30 to 50 microliters of supernatant. A 5% Kelex suspension is added to the tube and incubated at 56 degrees Celsius. Incubation times can vary from 30 minutes to overnight depending upon the sample type. This step is used to lye cells. Kelex binds magnesium ions which inactivates nucleases. Some procedures call for the addition of proteinase K at this step. Proteinase K functions to break down proteins, specifically histones which are responsible for packaging DNA. The sample is then vortexed and then boiled at 100 degrees Celsius for approximately eight minutes. This causes cell membranes to rupture, destroys cellular proteins, and denatures the DNA to yield single-stranded DNA. After the boiling step, some procedures include a vortexing step. The tube containing the sample and Kelex suspension is then centrifuged. The beads and cellular debris are pelleted, leaving a supernatant containing DNA that is used for quantitation and PCR. Here is an overview of the Kelex extraction method just described. If dealing with a blood stain, it is important to make sure most, if not all, of the heme is removed in the first wash step. Centrifugal filter units. Many laboratory procedures include a purification and concentration step using a centrifugal filter unit such as the Microcon 100 or Centricon. These provide 
excellent recovery of DNA samples with recoveries typically greater than 95%. They are used to concentrate, desalt and purify proteins, antibodies and nucleic acids. They are ideal for low level dilute DNA solutions and they allow products less than 100,000 Daltons to pass through, therefore retaining DNA in the filter. Purification and Concentration Initial Step Assemble the unit by inserting the filter into the filtrate or collection tube and add sample and buffer. Centrifuge at a low speed. Remove the filter unit from the filtrate tube and discard the filtrate. For the wash step, reinsert the filter unit into the filtrate tube and add buffer to the sample reservoir and cap. Centrifuge at a low speed and discard the filtrate and filtrate tube. For the recovery step, add the appropriate amount of buffer to the filter. Invert and transfer the filter into a new retentate tube. Centrifuge at a low speed. DNA is in the retentate tube. DNA can be stored refrigerated at 4 degrees Celsius for short-term storage. DNA should be stored frozen approximately minus 20 degrees Celsius for long-term storage. Avoid repetitive freeze-thawing of DNA, since this can cause degradation. The Kelix extraction process denatures double-stranded DNA and yields single-stranded DNA. Care should be taken not to transfer any Kelex beads to the PCR reaction, as this can inhibit PCR. Some studies show low extraction efficiency on low-level and compromised samples. Organic or other suitable extraction methods may be a better choice for some samples. Advantages of the Kelex extraction method is that it is quick, it is a single-tube reaction, non-toxic and cost-effective. The disadvantages include it is ineffective in removing some inhibitors, it yields single-stranded DNA and this could be problematic with some downstream methods, and it may have a low yield for compromised and or low-level samples.